Good evening everyone, my name is Aldax and today we have a Total War Rome 2 battle for you and it is going to be a battle of the second triumvirate between the forces of Mark Antony and the forces of Lepidus. So what we basically have here is, uh, well essentially it's a semi-historically accurate battle so we do attempt in some ways to represent history as best we can in other ways though we just kind of let things happen as they do obviously some concessions needed to be made for the sake of the game but we have done our best so we are on a random battle site somewhere in sicily uh, we have the forces of mr marcus antonius over here in white and the forces of lepidus in orange over on the other side i'm going to quickly give you a rundown of the two armies and then we're going to get straight into the action so this battle was fought between myself and my friend. I was representing Mark Antony's forces, he was representing Lepidus. I'm not entirely sure why he didn't choose Octavian, which is obviously the more interesting choice when it comes to uh, Roman leaders, but there we go. Anyway, first thing we're going to do is have a look at my deployment over on this side. So what we've essentially got is uh, divided the forces that well we have some different auxiliaries and stuff but the main unifying factor between our two armies here is that we have both attempted to recreate some roman legions so as you can see here i've got my two nice long wings of troops here this is one legion each or as close as we can get it in rome too so we have a first cohort over on this side sorry about the camera controls i'm still fairly new to this these are our first cohorts, which were always historically slightly larger than the others. And then next to them, we have nine legionary cohorts. We have two legions on Antony's side. The first one and the second one, they're spread out fairly large, but not too bad. We have the same on the other side, but I will get to that in a second. So for Antony's auxiliaries, the first thing we have is this line of four units of auxiliary Egyptian archers kind of well out in front skirmishing screening force they're also slightly downhill of the rest of the force that doesn't play too large a role we have two un oh sorry yeah two units of roman heavy onagers on either side of the force so we have two over there and two over here i initially threw these in because this was my first rome 2 battle in a while and i thought why not let's chuck in some artillery it'll be fun but it did turn out to be pretty instrumental to the battle as it enveloped, as it developed. So yeah, you'll see that as it uh, as it unfolds. We also have two identical divisions of cavalry, one on this side, one on the other side. Each of these divisions has one unit of auxiliary Thracian cavalry, which are these lovely looking fellows over here. I believe these are javelin cavalry. They're missile cavalry of some description, but I think they uh, throw javelins as opposed to having bows or something. And then next to them we have the auxiliary spear horsemen which look like some kind of gallic tribes or germanic horsemen or something very cool so in terms of actual deployment we've got the skirmishers drawn up right at the front we have the first legion or what i'm going to call the first legion in its very very long battle line each of these cohorts is formed five ranks deep or no six ranks deep six ranks well it's uh, basically it's enough to create enough width to give the unit a good frontage without being so narrow or i don't know whatever the opposite of deep is shallow that's the word i'm looking for without being so shallow that one charge from the enemy will just push straight through we have the second legion drawn up behind them the heavy onagers are on line with this second legion i didn't want to leave them too far forward because that would make them quite vulnerable but i didn't want to have them right at the back because then their range would be compromised even though you can move them I just, I don't know, I kind of wanted to keep them stationary. And then our cavalry divisions, which are mixed, so I've got one Thracian and one spear cavalry on each side, are actually behind my army as opposed to out on the flank, because I find that leaving cavalry on the flank makes them an inviting target for the enemy. And then finally we have Mark Antony himself, the Legatus, heavy command sitting right at the back but close enough to the troops to give them a bit of a push if things start going wrong. If we scooch on over to Lepidus's unit, here we have his two legions, same loadout as far as I'm aware, you've got nine legionary cohorts and one first cohort and then two legions. However, he's gone for what I originally believed was a, a maniple or manipular design, which is having these kind of checkerboard, they're almost like uh, interlocking teeth, 
going all the way down. What he was actually attempting to do was uh, an old Roman tactic from the Re Republican era called the triplex aces or the triplex aces, which is essentially you have a line of what's, what are called hastati, which are kind of medium spear infantry in the front. Then your second line of defense are your principes, which go behind, which are melee infantry. Then finally you have your triarii, which is your kind of last line of defense, but your kind of veterans at the back. And in that same vein, he's got his first legion of nine cohorts in the front, his second legion of nine cohorts in the rear, and then his two units, his two first cohorts, are in the very back here. His first, first cohorts are also protecting his siege weaponry, which are four scorpions, which is pretty cool, although this only seems to constitute one unit of scorpions, but whatever, not too uh, familiar with this game. Behind those, he has some Balearic slingers, which are Spanish troops, We're obviously historically accurate to Mr. Lepidus. There's three units of those, um, his other um, ranged units are his velites, which are out here, out in the front. Three units of those velites. You may question why he has so many skirmishes and why some of them are so far back. Essentially his strategy was that he knew these velites were going to get kind of pasted pretty early on. So he wanted to have some kind of ranged capacity to defend his scorpions. This is also why his first cohorts are flanking his scorpions to either side. He has his legate, Lepidus, at the very, very rear. And then he has two squadrons of cavalry. Over here on his left flank, he has three units of legionary cavalry, which are his melee cavalry. And over on the right flank, on the other side, we have two units of auxiliary Numidian cavalry, which I believe are also javelin cavalry. Now, you may question again why he's decided to put all of his ranged cavalry on one flank and all of his melee cavalry on the other. That was, in fact, an oversight in his command. He didn't actually mean to do that. It just kind of happened. It, I think he forgot or something. Uh, another si oversight that's worth mentioning is that we both... We were a little iffy when it came to ranking up and promoting our units. We didn't really know what the other person was going to do. We didn't want to rank everything up in case the other person hadn't, but we didn't want to not rank anything up just in case the other person had. So this is why you can see that his first, first cohorts have been pr beefed up pretty nicely. He's got six extra standards on those, which is not bad, it's not bad at all. And if you go and look at my legions over here, each one of them has got four extra standards because I thought, hell, Mark Antony is a general. These are veteran legions, why not? Finally, it's worth noting that uh, his overall strategy with his deployment here was that he was going to try and pin me down with this kind of massive infantry that he's got here and then use these kind of highly mobile cavalry to hammer and anvil me so pin me against his infantry and then move his cavalry around and hit me from the sides and rear and make me rout. My strategy was simply to keep the two legions entirely separate so that I could do the same thing and simply pin him down with the first legion and then he'd have to work his way all the way through these legionary cohorts while I had an entire legion's worth of reserves that I could just send in at will. So, anyway, that is our deployment done. So I'm going to knock this thing up to normal speed, and we're going to see how this plans out. Pans out. I did not come here to see Rome's honor shamed. No, like you... I came for victory! So we've got some people shouting already. So the great force of Lepidus begins moving forward. Very, very cool. Very, very cool seeing all these troops move in. Obviously you've got kind of a, a nice mix of Lorica Segmentata and Lorica Hamata, so the body armour, the kind of mix of segmented body armour and male body armour is very, very cool. And here we have the first kind of strategic decisions. He's seen how wide my skirmishes are, so he's decided to spread his velites right out so that he can match my frontage there. I think when he was deploying he didn't realise how wide my army would be, so he decided oh, to probably spread it out a little bit. He does make the same mistake, unfortunately, with his infantry, whereas my cohorts are spread out six men deep. His are in these kind of nicely compact blocks, which makes them very easy to deal with quite early on. So the skirmishing cavalry move up. He moves his archer cavalry up nice and early on. Try and gain some dominance of that flank, but unfortunately... Here go the siege on, niggas. 
Not bad. Not bad for a first volley. I realise that he seems to have kind of forgotten about these cavalry over here. So I swap for the flaming shot at this point. See what kind of damage that does from this nice uh, vantage point over here. Ooh, miss. Come on, come on, come on. Ah. Again, not exactly the best turnout for that. So at this point, uh, he is kind of concentrating on getting this main block moving. He's moving his entire army up together, trying to get me engaged as quickly as he can. It's complete oversight on these cavalry. But he does eventually realise that he's left them out there in a kind of precarious position. So he swings them around, moves them in, so the Onager has a much, much harder chance of hitting them. Although he does get a good hit in there, bloody hell. Unfortunately, my cavalry come out before he can engage my skirmishers. So at that point he was trying to get in range of my bowmen and thin them out. But my cavalry came running out from behind that left flank there. This mixed group obviously has a much, much bigger advantage than this completely skirmishing group. A bit of friendly fire there, that was an oversight. Now this is a good strategic point to note, this is when things start to get stressful for us. So his cavalry come into the right, he's going for my skirmishes uh, at the beginning. I see that coming and pull them back, I don't have to wait for the skirmish mode to do its thing, because that usually doesn't give them enough time to get away from cavalry. So I bring my cavalry out to contest him. He runs away because he knows he can get out of range before I can catch him. But the problem is, if he does move this cavalry out of the way, he exposes the flank of his velites here. When he does that, he knows that my cavalry are in the field and I have spear cavalry. If I enfilade these guys with a good charge, I can literally wipe out this whole unit. I can shatter it in one go. And he can't afford that. Also, with these siege onigas firing, I mean, you've got this brilliant shot. I mean, look at this. Flaming shots going right through the sky. It looks like meteors. He knows that he can't leave this cavalry stationary. He has to keep moving. And we see that. He can't leave the Velite's flank. He can't leave these stationary. So back come the cavalry. Also, at this point, we can go over to the other flank. And he sees this all unfolding so he begins to move forward his legionary cavalry. One of his flanks is already having trouble with this cavalry dominance which was his overall strategy. So he brings up the second flank as well. He tries to send his skirmishers in for the onigers but he realises they're a much bigger threat than he first thought so he decides against it. He's not going to chase my cavalry back behind my lines and he's going to wheel around and get out the way. He's going to try and keep these cavalry moving as much as he can so the onigers can't reach them. In the center, his Roman Velites have now finally reached my Egyptian archers. These guys are pretty good, actually. I was very surprised by how effective they actually were. And you can already see, like, the morale of these Egyptian archers is already failing. You know, they're having a really nasty time trying to fend these guys off. Here on the other side, things start happening as well. My, my spear cavalry start moving forward. He makes a decision at this point that it's probably what I would have done, to be honest with you, but it's a really difficult decision to make. He takes one of his legionary cavalry and he moves them over from the left flank to the right flank. He tries to fix his mistake from earlier, leaving his forces mixed, or unmixed rather. Unfortunately, he has left one cavalry unit behind, which means that on the left flank, he only has one unit. This is not good, considering I have two and they're charging downhill. Spinning over to this opposite flank, we'll see that he makes another mistake and his poor Numidian cavalry are caught by my cavalry as they come past and go for the Onigas. We're on slow motion at the moment but I, I really don't think it's slow enough. You're going to see these guys literally rout in about 5 seconds flat. They're already down to 25 men. Yeah, there they go. Start breaking. They're off. You can also see that my archers have finally given up the fight as well. They're like, sod that. Let's get the hell out of here. The Velites just simply outclass them. The fight begins on this side as well. It does look like my Thracians are going to get mobbed by this legionary cavalry, so I decide, okay, pull them out. I don't want to lose that unit to this legionary cavalry so early on in the fight. Sorry for slowing this down so much, by the way. It's just this is a massive battle and there's a lot going on. 
He makes a mistake, he leaves his other Numidian cavalry too close to mine as well, they get caught and mobbed. Here come his reinforcements he brought over from the other flank. But they're getting pelted by the Onager as they come close which shatters their morale. Not good. At the same time, here we go, my first legion starts moving. Those scooter held high, holding off against those Velisay's javelins. Now this was another oversight, the poor lad, he didn't put skirmish mode on because we're both a bit new to Rome 2. But well, we're not new to it but it's been a long time since we've played. So unfortunately his Velites just wander straight into my first legion there. They manage to stay at a good distance on this left side but unfortunately in the centre they get caught and battered a fair deal. Slight problem. Now as you can see I'm beginning to route his first legionary cavalry over here. He's brought the one he left behind up to try and reinforce them. This siege onager is, well heavy onager sorry, is causing my men some grief. I should have stopped that shit but I was a bit silly. Auxiliary Thracian cavalry, I'm putting them right on the border of that fight just to see if I can take the cavalry out nice and fast. But he makes a very very wise decision and disengages his cavalry. He's already lost all of the units he sent over on that side. Even this other supporting legionary cavalry unit got routed. He cannot afford to lose all his cavalry, so he pulls this one out of the fight. I'm not going to chase him, because I've only got, what is it, 19 men left from this unit. I don't want to waste them, so I pull them back as well. This is where Rome 2 decides to be a little bit of a bitch for me. We've got all my men here in the centre. I try and get them to move forward. And because Rome 2 doesn't like straight lines or group formations, because I didn't lock them, I didn't know that's what you were supposed to do, I was trying to move them forward and they just decided, oh, you know what, let's all spread out and go in completely different directions. So this goes on for a while. The Velites make uh, excellent use of this, pelting the hell out of my poor cohorts as they're trying to get back into lines. I'm desperately mashing all my keys, trying to get all these units back in line, not working very well. And then, of course, unfortunately, his cavalry units have been routed. So he has lost the cavalry battle, which means I have full reign, full dominance on both flanks. His main infantry body over here is still an entire battlefield away from what I'm trying to do. So these units over here, especially these ones, because these ones are at pretty much full strength, and these units on this far right flank, I can just do whatever the hell I want and start harrying these velites and get them away from my cohorts as they're trying to get back into lines. Here they come. Smash straight into these poor little bastards with their little lion skins. Yeah, they don't last very long at all. There you can see the uh, volley of Peeler. The javelins is coming in from these cohorts over here. This is not good. I realise that my cavalry are now way too close to the enemy line. So I think I'll give it a couple of seconds to let them properly shatter this unit, or break it at least, and then pull them back out of peeler range until things get too nasty. This is where things start happening. He does make another mistake here. While we were doing the little post-battle commentary, he did admit this to me. He didn't realise that he had routed my skirmishers ages ago, and even though my skirmishers have rallied, they're right at the back of my lines and they are no threat to anyone. So he decides erroneously to put his entire first legion into attacking Testudo, which is this big kind of shield formation here. This is not a good idea, and I can show you exactly why this is not a good idea over here. Yeah, see that? Watch this unit here. There's my cavalry smashing up the rest of his velites while he's moving his line forward. Here comes an Onyga shot. Oh, that one missed. All right. So I get my cavalry out of the way before they get caught by this main infantry line. I can't afford to lose my cavalry units just because they got too close. Yeah. Just to uh, really hammer that in, there's a slow motion shot. Okay, let's look at how many men are left. 111. 111 men. 110, 109, 108. Dropping fast. Dropping very fast. Yeah. There you go. It's still dropping, actually. Okay. 
You see that? 77 men left. I'm just going to pause that there. This is a full strength infantry cohort or a legionary cohort. And this is that legionary cohort that just got hit by a couple of Onager shots. It's lost 83 men, over half its men. It's not been in contact with any of my units yet. It's lost over half its men and its morale is broken from one Onager ball. Kids, don't put advancing infantry in Testudo if there's siege artillery pointed at you. Not a good idea. I really feel like I'm tooting my own horn here. I'm not. <laughs> I've got another battle recorded. We did two battles today and I got absolutely hammered in the second battle. So I'm not tooting my own horn here. I just thoroughly enjoy seeing uh, units of legionaries getting smacked by Onager balls. Brilliant. Alright, so let's stick it back to normal speed. I've got my cavalry right out of the way now. And here goes my legion. I push my first legion into play because I want to do what I set out to do in the first place. I want to pin him against this legion and then I have this entire unit, a massive battle line worth of reserves. He doesn't. His units are in such a kind of weird gappy formation, this kind of manipular formation, that he's going to have so many gaps in his line and this is what I'm counting on. I'm counting that all of these gaps in his line will force him to commit these reserves that he doesn't want to commit yet. So let's see that unfold. By now I've just set the heavy onagers to fire at will, they're basically just shooting at whatever the hell is nearby. I'm not really fussed about what they want to do, as long as they're not targeting units that I'm in melee combat with, I'm alright. See my cavalry are now well out of the way of everything, my archers are now back in formation, back just behind the enemy, so they, uh, just behind my line so they can provide some support. Oh this is another interface screw up unfortunately. Uh, I believe in one of the Warhammer Total Wars, you can just uh, order an entire line to attack and they'll pick their own targets. Doesn't work like that in Rome 2. So, poor Lepidus clicked one tar cl clicked one unit and then all of his men turned inwards to face, so he had to uh, quickly unfuck that. I don't think he even managed to fully do it. Here go the javelins. Out of Testudo at the last second, which is good. If he'd have attacked in Testudo, that would have been even worse. And here comes the first contact. Go up to full screen. The flag's off as well. Very nice. Oh, poor little bloke there. Covered in blood. Right, now this is where things start going wrong for him. So this entire battle line has now finally met. The infantry is now in full swing. I'm just going to pause it quickly so you can see his second legion is still back out of the way. Take the flags off so you can see better. These blocky formations are unfortunately going to be the end of him. So here's that poor half strength cohort that got hit by the Onager ball. This is basically going to do no damage at all. There's <laughs> all my men with their peeler raised. Looks amazing. Now you can see my cohorts on this far right side because they're so wide instead of being such kind of tightly compressed blocks. I actually have a much longer rank than him, even though we have the same amount of troops. This will prove to be the thing that finally helps in the final victory, is that these troops are completely unengaged. He sent a full legion against me, we've got the same amount of infantry troops in this fight at this time. But he's only engaged, like we've got this tiny little engagement of this cohort here. This is where the problem lies. Have a look at the flags to see how many units there are. There are four cohorts of Lepidus's infantry sandwiched against one of my cohorts in the center here. So he has done this kind of weird force concentration oblique order thing, but in the center, he's piled all of his troops into this one central area. We do have some other cohorts here on the left that have also engaged, but because they're put in blocks instead of proper units, they're not really engaged to the full capacity of their frontage. All of these troops that are sitting in the rear ranks cannot actively engage, whereas I have a full sixth of any one of my cohorts is fighting at any one time. Over here we have my first cohort, which is the light of my life. This thing will hold for hours, absolute hours. Brilliant. So the fighting begins. Really heavily weighted to the center and the left here. 
sorry I keep putting it onto slow motion, but there is so much happening at the moment. It's unbelievable. This was a very, very intense, fast-paced battle. So his uh, tiny little cohort is already wavering. He begins to send the left wing of his second legion in. So these are my first legion men, and they're being engaged for the first time. You can see my second legion is beginning to move now, but it's not moving into the battle. I'm just le taking a leisurely stroll down the hill so I can be within range if something bad happens. Because I can already see, like, what's happening here. He's piling more and more troops into this centre. He's doing his best to concentrate his forces on this side of the battle. Try and punch a hole wherever he can. I've moved my cavalry out to take care of these Balearic Slingers that have come out of nowhere. Very satisfying charge in there. He's trying to catch me with one of his legionary cohorts, one of his reserve cohorts on this side. And in comes his Legatus and his final legionary cavalry, the one he saved earlier. He's now moving them in. He's going round to the left flank, which is another mistake, you know. He's poured all of his reserves into the centre. Well, not all of them, but most of them. You know, here goes another one of what he... Well, they were his Triarii, basically. His first cohort is moving into the centre here. Another legionary cohort to attack this cohort here. He's desperately trying to spread out his forces to engage me along the entire width of the line, but it's not happening because he's engaging me with his reserves, not his main battle troops. This was funny. We both had a bit of a laugh about this. These two cohorts here just kind of stand here and stare at each other for pretty much the entire battle. They don't actually do any fighting. I mean, look at look, look at this bloke here. Look, he's got a face like a smacked ass. Bloody hell. All right, well, legionary cavalry over here. They're going to go for the flank. They're going to see if they can go down and hit those heavy onagers. But unfortunately, here comes one of my reserve units. Ah, oh, bit of lag there. But yeah. Those peeler basically completely decimated those units. My cavalry is going to catch him as well. Yeah, that flank is basically completely, completely refused. His numbers are dropping like flies over there. Not good at all. And here we go. This is where the reserve action starts to bear fruit. So I have an entire legion's worth of reserves. I've committed one on the far right to refuse this cavalry flank. And now I can see that this unit in the middle, this poor one cohort against five of the enemy, is starting to get overwhelmed. So I'm going to move two more cohorts in from the reserve line and start trying to plug that hole if I can. He's sending more men into my flank, so I send in my second first cohort. These two first cohorts together are going to hold for hours. There is no way he's going to break through there. And so the drudgery, the stalemate begins. With all of his forces committed here and only one or two reserve units remaining, I know that I can start being a bit cheeky. When my cavalry starts to harass his remaining velites on the flank here, I'm trying to chase him off trying to prove to him that I can do whatever I want on his flanks. See, I piss off long before his other Velites can catch me, taking a bit of missile fire, but it's not too bad at the end of the day. It could be a lot worse. My left flank is completely secure. And this is where, unfortunately, things start to go pear-shaped for me. On me. One of my cohorts over here starts to break. My archers move back, skirmishing away. But luckily I have reserves that he just doesn't. And this poor cohort of his has been absolutely weathered trying to break through mine. And it's met by two fre or one fresh cohort from my reserves. He sees his opportunity and all respect to him, he tries to take it. You know, here they come, pouring another cohort through here. This one's nearly at full strength getting through that hole where the first legion's been pried apart. My centre over here begins to rout as well, this poor cohort that's been holding for hours just breaks and runs. I start getting a little bit worried here because I think, ah oh, crap man, my, if my middle breaks then he can force a wedge between us and that's exactly what he's trying to do. He's trying to separate and isolate these units on the left flank so that he can then crush them and then a bit like Caesar at Pharsalus he can kind of 
knock my units in one by one going down the line. See my cohort here begins to waver as well and begins to rout. Everything starts going pear shaped. He's made a massive hole. Through come his men. The only saving grace here is that his men are exhausted because they've had to fight through mine. And I still have ample reinforcements on my flanks here. It's worth noting at this point that this battle has been going for quite a while. My forces are all routing. A lot of men have been killed. You know, look at all these bodies strewn about the place. But over here on the far right, which he's been neglecting, he never really engaged me properly on the right. His forces are getting battered, whereas mine really not that bothered at all. So I get some frame issues now. There's a lot of bodies on the field, a lot of things happening. He tries to support this unit, one of his breaching units that got routed because it ran into fresh reserves. More fresh reserves countering this charge here. He's doing his best to break through the line and get some of his men through, but they're all being blunted by fresh reserve troops. I start moving Anthony about, start getting my legate around just to keep the morale up, just to make sure that none of my troops rout. Because I have committed a lot of my reserves now and I cannot afford to let this crap happen. But this is where it starts to really go wrong. His right starts to buckle. The battle still goes really well for me. My left is solid as hell. I've blunted his advance on the center. Break the lines. All of the troops he's tried to commit have been basically rebutted. They've been kicked out, kicked back to where they came from. I sh probably shouldn't say that in the current political climate, but I believe everybody knows what I'm talking about. Rome 2 guys, come on. And here we go, the morale on the left is starting to crumble as well. He's desperately moving Lepidus around, trying to give his men some heart. But it's not, not going to happen. Too little, too late. He sent his Velites in as a last resort on the right hand side. But I can commit another unit of reserves here. They're just completely outnumbered on this right side. He tries to stave off the inevitable for a while by moving this other unit. But it's not going to happen, basically. It's just not going to happen. The chain route starts. All of his units on the right start fleeing. He tries to staunch the bleeding. The route begins to spread to the center. It's breaching units. To the left as well. These breaching units, they're gone. They can't hold up against the first cohort. He desperately tries to get these units around the side, but my legionaries again on this side are holding them tight. They can't get out. They can't move. They're pinned down hard. At this point, he knows it's a losing battle, but he's just trying everything he can. He's trying to get them to route. He's trying to target weak areas where possible. All credit to him, a lot of people give up at this stage. I know I do a lot of the time. He's holding on till the last possible second. Trying to inspire morale, keeping his center going, using those generals buffs, keeping them inspired. The left's starting to crumble as well. Even his legatus can't keep this cohort going. Yeah, and this is where the center's gone. Units on the right are fleeing. This reserve unit's gone. Oh, this is my unit. Oh yeah, this is me preparing a rear charge here. Ah uh, yeah, towards the end of the battle I decide to use a bit of force concentration of my own. I decide to completely crush his right and basically start snapping up his uh, battle line from this side. I do believe it works. This unit here is going. Yep, yeah, the left starts to go as well. Middle's been going for ages, they've been hanging on for dear life. But ultimately it's not enough. I free up my first cohorts, they decide to engage Lepidus over here. Yep, yeah, the left is completely gone. The right's holding on, barely. This poor cohort here is sandwiched here. These guys are managing to route my unit over here. Excellent work. Still trying to do as much damage as they possibly can. The center's gone. Center's just gone. 
He sees his final opportunity. He sees Anthony is vulnerable out here. Lepidus is right there. He could go for my Legget. He tries. But I spot him. I know what he's up to there. So he gives up. I counter charge him. If I can kill Lepidus, it'll start a chain route. He starts running. Straight into the jaws of another unit because his left has collapsed. Wheels around. And here's my unit. His sentry's gone as well. And that's the end of that. Fantastic battle. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Really, really fun to play. And this is the end. Pyrrhic victory. All credit to my friend, the Sassy Shogun, Matt, for being an incredible opponent. It was a very, very intense battle, hard fought. A lot of the time I was pretty sure he was going to route my lines before I could even get anything done. Really, really tough stuff, but incredibly enjoyable. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed that battle replay. We have plenty more to show you, plenty more of stuff. We've got Rome 2 stuff, we've got some stuff from Empire got loads more stuff planned please do stick around if you like the video give me a thumbs up otherwise just pop down a subscribe or something come back and check out the channel and hopefully i'll see you guys soon